Hey everybody, uh, week three, day four, made it through another one successfully. Um, today went to, uh, after work, went to the drilling class at 5.30 and then competition class at 6.30. Um, been a while since I, I, the drilling class last week was taught by Daniel. Um, uh, so it's been a while since I've been to a drilling class with Russ and I forgot how much that man loves to make you uh, tired before he even gets to teaching. Um, pardon me as I vainly try to fix my hair in the video. Anyway, um, yeah, so it started off with a lot of, you know, running the mat, jogging, then, you know, scooting, facing in, scooting, facing out, crossovers, uh, inside and outside, running backwards, skipping, etc., etc. Um, then we did rolling break falls down the mat, then we did boot scoots down the mat, then we did forward rolls down the mat, and then backward rolls, I believe. Um, and then we did some flat on your back, up to your elbow, up to your arm, hip away. Flat on your back, up to your elbow, up to your arm, hip away, down the mat. Um, then did the same thing except only up to the elbow, not all the way up to the arm before hipping away. Um, and then we drilled a lot of um, armbar mechanics since, um, like I think I mentioned last night, September was armbar month, so this was the last drilling class of armbar month. Um, we first started with opponent in your closed guard. Um, you're doing what, <laughs> what Russ calls day at the beach hands. Um, and so you're practicing getting into the armbar position using only your feet. So you place one foot in the hip, uh, trapping the arm, make the, make it light, swivel the other hip up and over. Uh, one foot in the hip, swivel the other one up and over. When you look at my giant disgusting feet. Anyway, feet up and over, other foot across the face, and then extend the hips up even though you still got the hands back. So there's no danger of possibly snapping your opponent's arm because, or rather at this point your partner's arm because there's no counterbalance to hold it in place when you pop. So you're sitting here and their hand just kind of goes, Wah. Um Then we went to, what was the next one we did? Did we go straight to the knee on belly? I think we did. Yeah. Next we went to um, knee on belly, where you, um, you're in side control. You grip your opponent's um, lapel right by the collar. So your left hand would be on the right shoulder here, so you're kind of bracing on the collar. And the right hand would grip their belt, and you pop up into knee on belly. Um, then your opponent would, or your sorry, your partner um, would use bad form and try to push with the arm, elbow out to make the uh, the teacup, and you shoot your arm in underneath and, and catch the tricep um, while posting with the outside hand. You pull it up to your chest and step around and drop back into the arm bar. Um, and so we did that from both sides, just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then we worked an arm bar from the back, where if I have your back with a hook in, but you're kind of turtled up on your hands and knees, you dive across to the outside arm and hook the arm over, grabbing your own lapel. Um, then you bring your... My left arm is catching your right arm. Then my left knee will come off and my shin will catch behind your head and push your head down to the ground. As I roll off onto my side, reach off with my right arm to catch your right leg, pull you over top of myself, and then transition to the arm and sit back, or transition the leg over the head and come back and sit down. Uh, after that, we worked... Um, that was the end of... Yeah, that was the end of um, drilling... The, the arm bars. At that point, we had finished drilling class. It was now 6.30, and so we started hitting competition class. Uh, Russ was saying how um, he's kind of had a, a shift in philosophy for how he wants to approach the competition class, which was he used to, to kind of teach point strategy. You know, okay, if you're, you know, if you find yourself down two points and you're on the bottom, then what you need to be looking for is a sweep, or if you're down two points but you're on top, you need to be looking for a neon belly, or mount, you know, just kind of time-wise and position-wise and points-wise what you should be trying to accomplish. 
Um, and he said that he's now switched to not even caring if you lose on points. He wants us just submission hunting the entire time. And that, you know, if we're hunting submissions and attacking and driving and pushing for that, if we lose on points, that's fine with him. But he just wants us attack, 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 attack the whole way through. Um, so in light of that, he had us working a drill to, um, if you're trapped on the bottom and side control, how to uh, get your way out of that, how to escape that position. So you start off with the one hand in the hip, the other hand on their back. You make space, roll this hand in so you can get your good frame. And then what you do is you're going to, if his hip's on this side, his head's on this side, you're going to hip hard up onto your right shoulder so you can get back in frame. So you can grab the arm and tuck it in and control it as you drop down. Then you hip up again and shoot this arm straight up and grab either his belt and gi or his armpit if it's no gi. Um, and then walk yourself around until you're as parallel as possible with the guy, at which point you then hip over and roll him the other way and you come up in his side control. Uh, my personal problem was when I would you know, I'd make that space and control here and get the arm, I would start walking and then kind of stop when we were still 90 degrees so that I was having to do a lot of work to try to bring the guy all the way over top of me as opposed to if he were more 90 degrees with me, it would just be a, or sorry, more closer to 180, it would just be a simpler roll over my shoulder like this, as opposed to trying to take him all the way over that way. Um, also, apparently, I was trying to make space and push him away, which doesn't work when I need to keep him tight to roll him with me. Um, so we worked that back and forth. You know, you would sweep to be on top, and then the other guy would establish and sweep until he was on top, and then you would establish your position and sweep him on top, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Um, after we worked that for a while, then we went and just started uh, sparring. Uh, hit four minute rounds. Uh, rolled with Marvin first. Um, Marvin's a great guy. He knows I'm looking for the competition. So, um, being a, one of our more regular judo players, um, he said, Okay, you know, what's your throw? What do you want to go for? And I said, Well, I'm looking for Uchimata. Right, yeah. And he goes, Okay, we'll start there. You throw with Uchimata. And then wherever we land, we'll just start the match from there. So I was able to, you know, practice, you know, feed the hand, get the grip, lock it in, step, turn, hip, throw in, um, and started from uh, on top and side control. Didn't, didn't last long there. <laughs> uh, Marvin's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, um, and it's obviously well-earned because he was able to uh, reestablish half guard and then sweep me, I believe. Um, don't remember if, if he tapped me or not. But, you know, he was able to take me over. Um, I don't think he tapped me. I think I was able to defend most of the evening. Um, so the round ended. There were five of us there that night. Russ, Marvin, myself, uh, Tyler, who's another blue belt, and Kim, who's a white belt. Um, so the next round, I was the odd man out. So I did my best to try to shadow box the Uchimata. Um, a couple of things that Marvin had mentioned to me about hand positioning, so I just tried to imagine feeding it, getting the collar, and then when, on the turn, he had really emphasized jacking my elbow up into the guy's armpit to really bring his weight up, and then simultaneously pulling his arm up and extending it up so that his weight is just really far forward, so then, being the giant man that I am, I can just kick my, my leg in and just take him over. Um, so I shadow boxed that for a while, uh, next, I rolled with Russ, uh, who is the black belt, the teacher of the class, um, and that was a miserable experience. <laughs> um, but, you know, felt like I did a pretty good job um, defending, um, was able to kind of, in a couple of instances, tell what it was he wanted to do, and was able to play defense on that fairly well, um, and, you know, um, some things like that. Um, and then I finished up the night with another round with Marvin, um, which we started by Marvin asking Russ if he had any tips for my Uchimata, and he suggested I really need to work on, once I get the guy's leg jacked, hopping into him, 
because a very common defense for guys with good balance is for them to try to hop around on that one leg and stay up. And if I just keep hopping at them and hopping at them and hopping at them and hopping at them, eventually they're not going to be able to maintain that with their leg jacked. Um, so we worked that. Um, I was able to um, get to Marvin's side control uh, doing the knee drive um, and then was eventually able to, or I'm sorry, the knee cut and, pat, and you know, extended out in the case of Gatami. Uh, Russ showed me that a, a different way to, to finish that instead of sliding the foot through, rather sliding it down the guy's thigh towards my hip, which makes, or, or towards my ankle, keeps my hip a lot lower to the ground, makes it a lot more difficult for the guy to try to sneak his knee in there to regain um, the guard. So overall, it's pretty good. Um, had a lot of fun, and my roommate's about to come kicking in the door. So I'm going to call it a night, and I'll talk to you all later.